Hi everyone and welcome to the first module of the Intermediate Machine Design Tutorial. Now the first module is about the concept design behind the excavator arm. To start off uh, we'll make a small sketch, uh, a very simple sketch to represent the different components in the arm which actually consists of the boom, uh, the stick or also called the dipper and finally the third component is the bucket. After that we'll be making our sketch a bit more sophisticated by adding the uh, information about where the linkages of the cylinders should be. Um, we'll also dimension our sketch such that uh, we can easily manipulate and change this sketch for later use in our 3D version. Uh, when we make our 3D version, we'll represent each of the arms with very simple linkages and with appropriate mates so that we can represent the, uh, the dynamics and the kinematics of the assembly uh, with, with proper accuracy. Now this basic dynamic assembly will be used for the SOLIDWORKS motion analysis in which we try to uh, optimize our system and we try to determine the optimum positions for our linkages, our cylinder attachment points uh, and we'll also look at uh, how to size the hydraulic cylinders for our assembly. And then finally, when we've determined the complete geometry of our arm, and we've also managed to select the hydraulic cylinders that we're going to use, we're going to run a complete uh, SOLIDWORKS motion analysis to determine uh, what is the actual range of working for this uh, excavator arm, and what are the areas it can target uh, in its complete motion. So that's pretty much it for the introduction. Let's start the actual learning. Now it can be quite overwhelming to know where to start uh, such a huge engineering endeavor such as designing a boom. But rest assured that much of the engineering industry relies on simple and elegant sketches to start off with. So we're going to go ahead and open our uh, first assembly this is the sketch links uh, go ahead and open this assembly and you'll immediately see that we have an otherwise complete excavator the only thing that's missing from uh, the actual model is the uh, the arm of the excavator so uh, we've already put a sketch in place for what our uh, arm should look like and what it could possibly look like uh, now, what uh, things do you have to take into consideration when uh, making this sketch? Uh, let's have a look at this sketch in more detail. Now, when you open this sketch, you'll see that we've only mentioned a few dimensions in this sketch. Uh, mainly, these represent the uh, the actual lengths of the linkages that we'll have for each of the boom, the stick and the bucket. Uh, we've also clarified the starting position of the boom. Uh, now let's discuss the starting position of the boom in more detail. Generally what will happen is that your chassis designers will specify this point for you. Since they're responsible for uh, the placement of much of the components as in the special arrangement of uh, the whole excavator uh, they will have certain limits to where you can start and uh, end your boom at. Now you can see that we have some points here uh, one of them is for the for the starting point or the pin of the boom uh, where it hinges on to the chassis and the other points, the other two points actually, are for the cylinders uh, that will lift the boom up and down with respect to your chassis. Now there are certain limitations, preferences and 
uh, design practices which limit where the boom should start uh, on the chassis of the excavator. You'd want the boom to be as low as possible, as close as possible to the ground, so that the overall uh, the turning moment that the boom generates is um, as low as possible. Uh, so there is not much risk of toppling over your excavator. Uh, other than that, you'll see that the uh, the points for the cylinders are underneath the boom. This is only limited by the the stroke of the cylinder. Uh, generally when you keep them underneath the pin you tend to get a good balance between the downwards and upwards range. Uh, this we'll look at in more detail when we actually put in the cylinders. Uh, for now we're taking this as a condition that the starting point of your boom is already defined and the starting point of the cylinders are already defined by the chassis designers. As for the factors affecting the overall length, uh, the first factor to consider is the overall range or the reach. Uh, now there are different, um, well actually there are different factors that will affect your uh, overall length or the reach. Uh, mostly what happens is that there are different uh, lengths of, uh, there are different total lengths of arms for different applications and these may vary from company to company. Um, most of the time you will need to uh, survey your customers uh, to determine which boom length was mostly helpful but generally there will be two types of booms one uh, which are quite long and may not do all that heavy lifting but their range and their reach makes them useful the others are the general purpose arms uh, these arms will do the heavy lifting for you as well as uh, carry most of the load uh, at this point we'll set a soft goal for what the overall length of our arm should be let's say um, customer requires or that the company decides that the horizontal reach of the arm should be around 11 meters right um, now this will also affect the uh, the downwards and the upwards range of the boom as well but they're all in consequence of the overall range that you select for your completely horizontal applications uh, as you notice that my linkages are slightly at an angle to each other um, at this point even when I'm uh, setting a goal of the overall range uh, you'd want to remain safe on the target that you set uh, the first thing is that this angle will not completely be zero at any time uh, you would get stuck in a toggle position when it uh, when it becomes uh, when the stick becomes horizontal with the boom similar is the case for the bucket and the stick uh, there needs to be some angle now this is quite an iterative, pro uh, iterative process and uh, you need to go back and forth throughout your design phase uh, so you can actually come up with the ideal lengths that will help you achieve the range the goal of the range that you've set initially now let's have a little look at what will determine the length of each of the individual links we'll start off with the bucket uh, the length shown here for the bucket is actually uh, one of the widths of the bucket uh, and this will be a direct consequence of the volume that you are looking to carry uh, in your bucket. The size of the bucket uh, is actually another thing that depends upon the size of the excavator and the application for which the excavator is used. There are many different types of buckets available in the market and uh, they serve different purpose. The next thing we want to look at uh, we'll look at collectively are the lengths of the boom and the stick so uh, the overall reach of the arm is important for choosing these two uh, 